strong. Hello everyone. This is Doc V once again for the lesson in English. English 6, quarter 4, week 6. It is milk based and the topic is assessing credibility of sources of information. But before we start, please subscribe and click the notification bell for more updates of videos. Thank you. At the end of our lesson today, you are expected to assess credibility of sources of information. Everyone and anyone can create content online. Today, it's hard to determine whether an internet resource you find is authentic or not. If you're looking for factual resources, search through newspaper publications, TV news, journals, official pamphlets, books, and magazines. But nowadays, people opt to search for information on the internet. They tend to believe anything posted on the internet without even checking for credibility. Fake news sites publish incorrect data. People believe these sites because of their persuasive, believable nature. If you're looking for a credible resource, you should avoid hoax sites as this may affect the accuracy of your study. In choosing information resources such as books, journal, articles, and newspaper, whether in print or electronic, you must evaluate their credibility. This is also true of websites and other types of sources, including social media, videos, podcasts, etc. Evaluating online resources is an important step in any research process. By assessing the credibility of the sources, young writers like you can produce as research output more effectively when reliable and accurate sources were used. This lesson will surely help you check and validate the reliability and accuracy of the sources you are using, such as book and articles, either print or online. Before we proceed to our lesson, let us answer the following vocabulary words that will help you understand this lesson. The first one has been done for you, okay? So, uh, the first one is, what is that correct word? This is fake news, okay? So, we have to fill in the blanks with the correct letter, okay? So, the first one is a noun, so it is a fake news. This is false information or propaganda published as if it were authentic news. How about how about number the next one? What do you think is the answer? Let us answer this orally, okay? So what is that? Okay, good. It is misinformation. It is a noun. The false or inaccurate information especially that which is intended to deceive. How about the next one? Another noun. The quality of being trusted and believing. What is that? Okay, good. It is credibility. And how about the next one? It is also a noun, the ability to be relied on or depended on as for accuracy, honesty, or achievement. Okay, good. It is reliability. How about the last one? It is also another noun. The condition or quality of being true, correct, and exact, 
freedom from error or defect. Yes, it is accuracy. There are several aspects that you should look for in assessing the credibility of the sources of information. You should check first who published the content. So it is the authorship. Then the second, where was it published or the publication? Okay, for the third one, when was it published? Kailan, the currency and relevance. And also, number four, the truthfulness and integrity of the facts. It is the accuracy. Okay, so number five, how is it written and presented? Purpose and objectivity. And number six, and what references are cited in the article? The links and references. So these are the several aspects that you should look for in assessing the credibility of the sources of information. Una, sino nagpublish noon? Sino author noon? Pangalawa, saan ito napublish? Saan publication? Pangatlo, kailan ito napublish? Baka naman nung napublish pa 10 years ago. Okay? Dapat, talagang kung, uh, kung baga latest publication. How about number four? The truthfulness and integrity of the facts. Accuracy. Sometimes kasi, uh, mga fake news nga, sinasabi dyan, hindi totoong nangyayari para lang tayo maingaan nyo kung ano-ano mga sinasabi to motivate us to copy that. And number five, how is it written and presented? Ano ang purpose niya? Paano niya sinulat? Paano niya na-present? Then number six, what references are cited? Anong links? Anong references? Ang kanyang pinakita. Okay? Ang sinight niya. Okay? Okay, next. Look at this, children. Let us read. The first one is authorship. Let us read and understand very carefully. For authorship, the author of the content is a concern when considering the eligibility of the content. First of all, the author should be an expert. Take note, it should be an expert on the subject discussed in the article. She should have the credentials to back up his knowledge of the subject matter. Usually, the information about the author can be found on the website along with the content. The name of the author can be found below the title, on the side of the article, or at the bottom. Sometimes, more information on the authors is found below the article, also known as an author's bio. An author may be credited if he is oftentimes mentioned in other authoritative websites. Or like this. Like, this is the example of authorship. Okay? And the children, authorship, he or she must be eligible. He or she must be an expert for the subject he's going or she's going to discuss. Okay? And look at the credential because uh, if he's knowledgeable or he knows the subject matter, usually you can also see the information about the author and their biography, right? You can see after the title or the side title at the bottom sometimes. And the author is maybe credited in if he oftentimes mentioned in the other authoritative websites. Okay, next, the publication. If the information about the author is not present or it not present, the publisher of the resource article can be checked for authority. Okay, saan ba ito na-publish? Baka ito naman ay uh, uh, hindi talagang 
ang publication talaga ay hindi talaga sa mga sa website na bibigyan natin ng integrity, ng integrity, di ba? Then take a quick look at the website. Are you familiar with the publication name? Pangalan ng website. Is the publisher reputable and credible on the subject matter? Okay, that's the question. Look at the website's name, its logo, the URL of the website, and other indicators that can prove its reliability on the topic. So, one quick look of that URL can help you determine if it's reliable source or not. Trustworthy website ends in dot org, uh, comma, dot edu, comma, dot gov, comma, or any recognizable web address. Another way to check the publisher's site is via its About Us and Contact Us page. These pages will contain information about the publisher. You can counter check their details by conducting another research, another search, okay? Then, reliable websites published content that is relevant or under the same scope of the resource page that you found. Check how often do they publish content and if they publish related content as well, news and publication websites, the Inquirer, Rappler, the Philippine Star, etc. are authority sites of four facts. Consider the resources credibility if the publisher has mentioned or been mentioned by authority sites. Sa publication children, yun nga sinasabi rito. Tingnan natin kung saan ang website na yun. Familiar bang website na yun? O talaga credi credible ba siya? At lagi bang nalalaman natin, you have to check sa publisher sites. Ang information kasi lagi nilalagay nila doon. Tapos, titingnan natin yung mga resource page na nakikita. Then, check natin how often do they publish content. Um, tapos, ang kanilang news and publication websites. Uh, we have these examples here about the authority sites for facts. Then, also consider the resources credibility in publishers as mentioned. Kung lagi-lagi may na-mention yan, ibig sabihin talaga, ito talaga ay credible. Okay? And now for the currency and relevance. In conducting research, the currency and timeliness of data are important in making inferences for data gathering and analysis. Information changes throughout the years. On the internet, it is easy to get lost among the billions of data available at your fingertips. Even academic articles such as thesis and investigative reports can have obsolete data. Out of date content has information that is not relevant or applicable in today's time how can you determine if the content that you're looking looking at isn't outdated how do you check it the data you have is current or timely look for the date of publication oftentimes it is located near the title of the resource you can look for the date at the side of information of the article and even at the end of the article. Meaning to say, children, that the currency is very important and relevant. So, like, information changes throughout the years. Nagbabago ang informasyon. E mamaya, outdated na pala yun, obsolete na pala yun. It was dapat, for example, nag may research kayo about thesis nyo na kailangan 5 years ago pa lang or 2 years pa lang ang nakalipas hanggang doon lang. Eh, paano kung 10 years na hindi na pwede? Kaya, paano malalaman ang date kung saan? Siyempre, makita nyo sa data na nyo ang, uh, ang date of publication. Kasama ito, located near the title of the resource. You can look for the date at the side of information of the article. And even at the end of the article. So, tulad nito, 
Nakita nyo ba kung nasaan, kung evaluating resource complete uh, beginner's guide? Makikita nyo rin dyan kung nasaan, kung anong date. Nakita nyo kung kailan, eto, ganito yun, nakikita dyan kung kailan ang currency. Kasi sometimes, children, yung palang data na nabasa mo o kaya'y nakuha mo, hindi na pwede ngayon. Kasi nga, syempre, syempre, may pagbabago sa informasyon. May mga changes, di ba? Kapag updated na, like may mga pangyayari noon na hindi na pwede mangyari ngayon, so kailangan din alamin natin. So you should also uh, look for the date of publication. Okay, kids? Good. How about the next one? Accuracy. In writing, accuracy refers to a writer's correctness in using the language system. This means that the writer's use of grammar and vocabulary should be correct and as good as it could be. Minimal errors are virtually present present in all kinds of publication, but poor spelling and grammar can easily reflect how careless an author is. And this may result in distrust. Again, web resources are prone to technical errors since not all web publications go under the scrutinizing eye of a copy editor. Accuracy also refers to whether an online resource is correct with its facts Online resources can be verified easily through a quick search on the internet. Other resources provide a reference list that can help in double-checking facts cited in the article. Ito na po, children, ang accuracy. Yung a writer's correctness ng paggamit niya ng language. For example, he's using English language. Of course, the writers must use grammar and vocabulary correctly, right? Kasi nga, ang accuracy, correctness ng language as uh, gives, it gives uh, emphasis, okay? So, minimal errors are virtually presented in publication. Sometimes kasi, uh, typographical error, but Pero children, pag mali ang spelling at grammar, nagre-reflect ito na talagang careless, hindi maingat ang author. So, ano magiging mag mangyayari pag ito ang spelling ay mali, ay grammar ay mali, ang mangyayari dyan, yung mga galing mag-scrutinize, syempre, hindi basta-basta ang naka nagbabasa, meron din mga nagbabasa na, syempre, linguistic siya, or, or ano niya sa English talaga, grammar. So, mayroon nag scrutinize dapat doon. Kaya nga, bago i-publish ang ng isang editor, i-publish yung kanyang article, dapat na-scrutinize na yan ng copy editor. Okay? Ibig sabihin na scrutinize inisa-isa niyang i-check lahat ng spelling, ng grammar, at ng correct term na dapat ng doon. Nakuha nyo? Okay. The, okay, purpose and objectivity. An online resource should, should teach, inform, explain, or persuade. By reading the article, it should become evident what the article aims to impart to its readers. The author should not be biased with the, his views reflected in the article unless stated otherwise. You should comprehend whether the contents is backed up with facts or based on an opinion and propaganda. The content should show... It's intended audience. Okay, so uh, we should know the purpose and objectivity. So, in this part, in this part, kids, um, an online resource should teach, diba? Teach, inform, nag-explain, nag-persuade. And it should be evident, kailangan na nakikita doon, na yung article na yon ano ang gusto niyang i-impart, anong gusto niyang uh, uh, sasabihin o kaya ipaliwanag sa mga readers. Dapat, hindi siya bias. Ano ang sabi ng bias? Yung hindi balanse, kumbaga, may kinikilingan. Dapat, walang kinikilingan, sabi nga sa Channel 7, walang kinikilingan at walang protektahan Dapat, 
nasa mid sa nasa gitna siya. Okay? Tapos, with views reflected in the article. Then, you should comprehend, intindihin whether the content is back up with the facts. Diba? Sa nakaraan nating pag-aaral, alam natin yung facts at saka yung opinion lang, di ba? Pag facts talaga, mayroong mga evidences, may pinapakitang mga taga nakikita, okay? Na talagang pinapakita yung facts, may mga nakalagay dyan. Pag opinion lang, syempre, or propaganda, pag opinion lang, it's about, about, uh, about your opinion, about your point of view, about that. So, dapat, pinapakita rito yung facts. May mga evidences. Okay? And you should show it to the audience, to the readers. How about the links and references? Links are used for citing to credit references found on the other websites. Links used on the content should be useful and relevant to the topic of the content. Make sure you... You only link to timely, relevant content. Meaning, link to the sites for the first page of relevant. And we call it the SERPs. And perform a yearly link audit to check if the content is still relevant. For example, if the links within the content proceed to a 404 page or not found, the content may be outdated. Okay? So, malilaman natin doon sa mga links na yon di ba? Kung ito ay outdated na, relevant pa, dapat naging sure tayo sa mga links at references na ginagamit natin. Yun yung sinasabi. Kapag outdated na, hindi na mabuksan, di ba? Pero pag mga talagang, may kita mo mga links na proven, yung links na talagang may, uh, kumbaga madaling mabuksan dahil mayroong mga nakasaad ng mga facts, so, go for it. Okay? For learning task 1, assess the credibility of the news article about the COVID-19 updated in the Philippines. Use the question below. Okay, tingnan natin. Ito yung nakita natin sa ating, sa makita yan, sa ating lips. Oh. Learner's packet, okay. Sa lip natin. For grade 6. Nakalagay dito, DOH updated the public in the COVID-19 health event. Joint press statement May at 10 May 2021 kung kailan niyang ginanap. May nakalagay niyan. Okay, tapos may mga pictures dito na nakikita kayo. Then, eto nga ang sinasabi dito, the national government led by the vaccine cluster with representatives from the United Nations World Health Organization or WHO the UNICEF, U.S. Embassy, and uh, Pfizer, Philippines received the vaccine doses at Ninoy Aquino International Airport na IA in Pasay City. <clears throat> okay, these additional Pfizer vaccines will be used on priority groups A1 to A3, okay, who will be receiving the first dose of these vaccines. We have been working hard to bring this vaccine to the country, especially with the scarce global supply of COVID-19 vaccines, we thank the COVAX facility and all of our partners for making this possible. We will continue to boost public confidence in our national vaccination programs, said Health Secretary Francisco Duque III. The arrival of the additional vaccines will allow more Filipino to get to get an occultate uh, in occultate occulated against COVID-19. The government is currently administering the first and second doses of COVID-19 vaccines to healthcare workers, senior citizens, and persons. With, uh, with common abilities, a ceremony was conducted on May 1 in which 5,000 economic frontliners who belong to the A4 priority of group were vaccinated. 
Okay, let's start na. Nakita nyo na yun, di ba? Binasa, makabasa nyo rin yan. May date dito, may sunod-sunod na pangyayari at nakalagay na dyan kung ano mga sinasabi. Aside from that, meron din sila mga photos dito, di ba? At nakalagay din ang caption dyan. Ito yung photos, this is the caption, di ba? May nakalagay din dyan. Tapos, kung kailan, kailan, ina, kailan, uh, kailan to na-publish, di ba? So, ngayon, children, tatanungin natin, may katanungan dito. Okay, what is the, let us, let us answer all the questions given there after this, okay? Since nakita nyo, meron dyang who, when, kailan, where, saan, what, at at marami pang mga question, WH question at may kasama pang H, how question. Okay? So, let us review the evaluation tool presented above. Assess the credibility of the article. The answer in the question below. Who published the content? Who? Nabasa natin ha, kung sino nagpublish ng content doon. So, what is your answer? Okay, good. It was published by the Department of Health. Next question. Where was it published? Kailan? Saan? Saan ito na published? Where? Saan? Okay, it was published. Okay, from the WHO Lead Covax facility. Then, then, when was it published? Kailan pinablish to? Okay, nung May 10, 2021. Then, number four question. Are the facts from the article accurate? Tapansin nyo ba na ang, fact, ang mga tinukoy doon na facts sa article ay talaga accurate? Yes, the facts from the article are accurate. Then, number five. How is it written and presented? How? Paano ito na sinulat at presenta? Okay, the written article answer is the question who, what, where, how, and when. The data was presented accurate, accurately. It was clear and precise. Okay? Now, in learning task 2, in this time, try to look for other resources available to support a research paper. Ito ngayon, mag-research kayo for your social studies class. Halimbawa, uh, let's say your teacher asks you to study the issue on the issues about the Western Philippine Sea dispute. Now look at the possible books, online articles, news, or other related resources. Then assess nyo, assess the credibility of the materials that you found using that checklist below and have fun. Okay, so you will be the one to check this one. You're going to assess the credibility of the materials that you found using the checklist. Ibig sabihin, children, kukuha kayo, mahanap kayo ng resources na available sa inyong, uh, sa inyong research paper. Okay? It's about ang ating uh, pag-aaral, ang issue, ay tungkol sa inyong social studies about the Philippine, uh, the West Philippine Sea dispute. Tapos, hahanap kayo ng possible books or online articles or news or related resources. Dahil nung no, ang pinag-aralan na natin kung ano yung mga related resources. ba? Tapos, i-assess natin ng credibility. Ano paano nyo i-assess? Siyempre, i-check nyo lang kung yes yun or no. Okay? How about the authorship? Ito yung mga i-check natin. Okay, kung nabas, may napuntahan kayong, uh, re, uh, mayroon kayong nakuhang resources, articles tungkol dito. Number one, sa authorship, the author's information is available on the content publication. The author is affiliated with an academic institution or credible organization. The author is credible and shows qualification about the content subject. The author is considered expert about the subject matter. Diba? Diba? Nabasa nyo na yon, So, I assess nyo kung may pub ang publication ng author na binasa nyo. Kung ito ba ay credible ba siya. Kung siya ba ay uh, nagpapakita ng kwalifikasyon sa content ng kanyang ginawa. Or expert ba siya about the subject matter. Authorship ang tawag doon. Next, the up-to-date and relevance. Check natin, ha? Yes or no? The content and information are up-to-date and relevant. 
Then, the content shows most recent changes and updates of the content itself. Then, the content uses statistical information with the title and date referencing. Then, the website is well-maintained with very minimal to no broken links. So, tingnan nyo ha, updated ba siya or relevant. Accuracy naman, if the content is free from spelling errors. Tingnan nyo, the content has been thoroughly edited and reviewed. The content is well written and grammatically correct. The sources indicated and the content is reliable and verified elsewhere. Ibig sabihin, tingnan nyo, ang spelling ba ay uh, wala bang errors? Yung kanyang content ba ay edited at na-review? Yung kanyang grammar ba? Yung subject verb agreement ba? Yung gamit ba nila ng correct usage of words? Tama? At saka yung sources indicated ba ay reliable? Na-verified na ba yun? Okay, so yes or no. Then, the purpose of ob and objectivity, the content serve its purpose. Nakaka-teach ba siya? Inform, explain, persuade. The author or publisher is not biased. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya uh, biased. Ibig sabihin, nasa tama siya, walang kinikilingan. Okay, number three, you understand that content is covered with facts, opinion, or propaganda. Naintindihan mo kapag ito ay facts, kapag ito ay opinion, o kaya ito propaganda. Then, uh, the publisher clearly owns responsibility in providing the accurate information. Sila ba ay talaga, may kita mo, talagang uh, nagpo-provide ng accurate information. How about the links and references? Links on the content are useful and relevant to the topic for the content. Links on the content are not dead or links to a 404 page. References are mentioned by the author or the author cited other sources of information. Napakadali lang ito, children. Kapag kayo ay nakakuha na ng ano, resource ng articles, tapos nakita nyo na yon, ang gagawin nyo na lang ay i-check nyo lang kung yes or no. About the authorship, if up-to-dated and relevance, accuracy, purpose and objectivity, links and references. Do you understand? Okay, good. Uh, this time, before we move on, let us see what you have learned from the previous activity. This activity will show how well you understand assessing the credibility of the sources of information when doing research tasks. Okay, letter D, you have to fill in the chart with your understanding or what you have learned about the topic. Okay, let us, I know you enjoy the activity. Okay. This one is assessing the credibility of source of information. And the first one is assess the credibility of your source of information using it. What are they about? And how can this help to assess the credibility of the source of information? Paano matutulungan yan? Let's start with the authorship and publication. Okay? What are they about? Ano ba yung authorship and publication? Kanina, in-explain ko na sa inyo at alam ko na alam nyo na rin ang sagot dito. So, let's start that. What are they about? Authorship and publication. Okay. The author should be an expert on the subject discussed in the article. If your answer is this, he should have the credentials to back up with knowledge of the subject matter. You're right. And how about how can this help you assess? The credibility of your source of information. Of course, the information about the author can be found on the website along with the content. The name of the author can be found below the title, on the side of the article, or at the bottom. Okay, you got it kids? And the next one, number two. For number two about currency and relevance... What will be your answer here? Okay, for currency and, and relevance, in conducting research, the currency and timeliness of data are important in making inferences for data gathering and analysis. So, alam ko, alam nyo na yun, di ba? And the next one, what will be your answer there? So, it should be, 
You should ask this question when thinking about the currency and relevance of the source of its information. When was the information published? Has the source been modified, updated, or revised? When did this take place? If the information is found online, does the website have current links of the broken links? So this is the currency and relevance. Okay, next. For accuracy. Okay, in accuracy, of course, in writing accuracy refers to the writer's correctness in using the language system. This means that the writers use the grammar and vocabulary should be correct and as good as it could be. Then minimal errors are virtually percent present in all kinds of publications but poor spelling and grammar can easily reflect how careless an author is and this may result to distrust i know about your answer for the next one nice so you're going to ask these questions when thinking about accuracy and resource first is the information repeated anywhere else in the other sources or does the source include references that clearly indicate where the author found his or her data? So that's accuracy. And how about the next one? The purpose and objectivity. Okay, what is your answer for this? Oh, so an online resource should teach, inform, explain, or persuade by reading the article. It should become evident what the article aims to impart to its readers now the next answer okay so the author should not be biased with his views reflected in the article unless stated otherwise and you should comprehend whether the content is backed up with facts or based on opinion and propaganda the content should show its intended audience that's the purpose and objectivity. For number five, how about the links and references? Okay, so as you can see, links are used for citing and, and to credit references found in other websites. Links used on the content should be useful and relevant to the topic of the content. And to assess the credibility, make sure you only link to timely, relevant content, meaning link to the sites from the first page of relevant serves and perform a yearly link audit to check if the content is still relevant. Is that clear, kids? Good job! So for that, that's all for today, kids, and thank you for listening and answering all the different tasks. And again, uh, for those who are not able to subscribe yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell for more updates of videos. Thank you, kids. God bless us all. See you again next video. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone.